Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the general response that the Magic community has on PewDiePie playing MTG Arena. They have, for the most part, at least the most vocal members, not the silent majority, just the most vocal members, have determined that he would be bad for the game. Um, this is coming from a Facebook post, but it's one of thousands, if not tens of thousands of posts that show you the sentiment. Now, these posts are being made mainly to get lots of likes. Um, this person used to be big in the magic scene with legit MTG, and they're no longer producing magic content to my knowledge, which is very sad. But anyway, uh, the post is, so PewDiePie plays MTG dot 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 dot, and given the core audience, um, you would expect very bad comments. And that's what people do. They go ahead and they say something that seems neutral, but then is taken aback. Um, we have multiple people commenting and so on. So what? He should have stopped appearing on everyone's radar years ago. He's a blank and should be banned. So they're already talking about banning him from Magic, which is really hilarious because he plays one game or he makes one video on Magic. It gets, what, 4 million views, 2 million plus views. 2.1 was the last time I saw it. And they already want to ban him from playing Magic. And that mentality of let's include everyone is really the excuse for excluding people, right? So the people who are most dedicated to being community building and included pe including people, they actually in private and even vocally uh, on social media will be the first ones to say, hey, let's not give this guy a chance. Let's exclude him right away. Let's ban him right away before he can uh, play this game anymore. And in fact, the game should be pretty proud that he has played the game because it seems like an eSport. And PewDiePie has said in the past that he's actually played Magic, Paper Magic, before. So it's not like he hasn't had experience with this game. He knows what it is. He's probably played it as a child. So why wouldn't we invite him? Why wouldn't us as a community invite other people, especially content creators, to go make content about Magic and then grow our community? And that's what I find the biggest difference when I played till today is. When I played, um, you were a nerd, you were a geek, you were an outcast. And because you were an outcast, hey, this other guy plays. So it's really hard to find other outcasts with the same type of hobby as you. And everyone had the same hobby, which was Magic the Gathering. And then you could have friends, you could have a good play group, I mean, it was a really easy way for you to make friends is for you to go to FNM, which we had a local Wizard of Coast store in the mall, or go to your local game store, meet kids your age. And, and there was always kids my age. That's the surprising part was I remember when I was younger, there was always young kids around the store. Now today, it's just there's not new blood. There's not PewDiePie blood in terms of little kids. And I think that's bad. I think that's actually quite destructive. And you might ask, why is that the case? Why were there more kids when I grew up um, than there are kids today where there are none? So go to pre-release. How many people go to pre-release who are under, let's say, 18? Very few. How many people are FNM that's under 16? Very few. Um, compared to what I grew up with, which it was like everybody, because you didn't have the enfranchised Magic players, or they had Quake or something, and you just had young people playing the game. And the same with the Magic Pros. Those Magic Pros, those 32 Magic Pros, they've been playing the game for 10, 20 years. So they've been playing since they were kids. They were on the Pro Tour since they were under 18. They had a Junior League, which they don't even have anymore, a Junior Championship. So uh, basically, uh, you have this mentality of, hey, you're not like me, I'm going to exclude you today, which is the opposite mentality that you had when I was younger, and magic was, hey, you've been excluded from society, do you want to come and sit down and play a game with me? 
And that's the main selling point of Magic to me is you can go anywhere with your deck you can, or you can draft. You don't even need a deck. And you can just sit down and draft with people. You could go to uh, Russia right now. You could go to Brazil. You could go to Hawaii. I played Magic in Hawaii. It was pretty cool. I did a draft. It was fun. I have old video of it somewhere on this channel. Uh, that was uh, many years ago. Um, I'm trying to remember. Oh, and then I got called out by the MTG Finance community for an unrelated, um, unrelated episode. But my point being is you used to have Magic as a accepting community because even though there was this guy in my middle school, and Emma, uh, I don't think we went to elementary together. If we did, I'm not sure that we were in the I didn't know about him. But we played Magic. I really disliked him. I'm pretty sure he disliked me. Um, it was, we were not friends except we played Magic. And because the group of Magic players were only 8 to 10 of us, we had to stick together. And that's what we did. So even though I didn't really like his personality, he probably didn't like my personality, we played Magic and that was enough to build a community. We didn't debate about politics, we didn't debate about you know, Amazon or any of this stuff that is irrelevant to Magic. Um, where we didn't debate about cosplayers and whether or not <laughs> donations, can I have a dollar? I mean, um, it's so fascinating what is you know, what has been involved in Magic. If you read the Twitter of these Magic the Gathering employees, the first thing they say is, my my uh, statements do not represent the company. But let me just tell you all my, all my feelings about this. So I can summarize this very well with uh, how they're treating PewDiePie. The guy makes plays a game. He's pretty interesting. Probably the most interesting MTG Arena gameplay I've seen so far. And then he, then all the Magic community gets up there. They post on Reddit to get their upvotes. And, you know, they're being really mean. The moderators have to shut down both Freds. And it's not great. And then you have people posting who don't even play Magic. These people don't play Magic. These are just random dudes who, whenever, like, a post about PewDiePie, do, uh, PewDiePie playing Magic, they know that, oh, well, we can call him a blank, and we can call him a blank, and he did. I get it. I get it. You don't like me. You don't like him. You don't like PewDiePie. You don't like, you love Tolarian and the Mana Source because you donate your hard-earned money to them, which I still find interesting, but nonetheless, you like them. You don't like me. But why have we got, how did we get to this point where two people who play Magic can actively dislike each other until the point that someone like Unsleeve Media gets punched in the face by a Magic store owner, a WPN Magic store owner nonetheless. And I can't imagine that because when I played Magic when, uh, in middle school, elementary, even in high school, and even college, um, it was something that built the community together. It wasn't like we excluded women. It just, we didn't, I mean, we didn't see any women in Magic. So, yeah, I don't know. We've never had that interaction with them. So, um, one of the main takeaways is Magic has become this toxic community because of people calling it a toxic community. It's kind of a feedback mechanic. So, if you're so interested in including everyone that you exclude some people, then you have to exclude some more people. And then you have to exclude some more people. And if you talk about who is included, uh, Alex Pacini, we've given him every single chance to prove that he can change. And like I said many times before, he cannot change. Uh, even if he really honestly wanted to change, there's nothing that can change him. He's always going to cheat, lie, and steal because that is the nature of Alex. He has 30 plus years of cheating, lying, and stealing, how can we change the guy? Like, you can't change him. He's just the way he is. I mean, are you going to really change him within the next, like, two hours? Like, change him within the next month? Or even unchange him in the next year? You banned him for eight months. Did he really change in those eight months? He wrote a very heartfelt apology on Facebook that now he has deleted, but luckily Reddit has a copy and paste version of it. And he's talking about change and this and change that. And oh my goodness, now I'm so you know different. I'm going to talk about catching 
cheaters at a judge thing. And it's like, what? If we can accept him at, as part of our community, we can't accept PewDiePie. We can't un- accept Unsleaf Media. We have to act- actively witch hunt them because, you know, they're not part of my community. They're not part of my game. And I'm here to tell you, we've accepted a lot worse <laughs> throughout the years. We've accepted some pretty ridiculous individuals. Uh, David Williams, who is actually a poker player and someone who has che- has been accused of cheating many times by other Magic Pros, is now being sponsored and being sent to Mythic Invitation and all that cool stuff. And even Andrew Yanyuk, who has raged against Magic, and he wrote a very angry article, uh, he has been accepted with open arms backed. So, I don't know. I don't know how to say it, except I think we're excluding people solely based on ideology because there's no other indicators right andrew yanyuk is a white male so why did we accept him back when and he was caught cheating he admitted he cheated and then he just slammed wizard of coast as hard as he could uh with all types of you know really bad statements about them which i think were true at the time and now he's been accepted back so how can we turn down pewdiepie and accept Andrew back. It doesn't make any sense, right? Like, what what is the difference here? And PewDiePie, I think that he has grown, as everyone grows, and he has learned. But overall, he's just, he's a good person. Um, there's no, so when I look at Alex Puccini, I know he's not a good person. This should be obvious to you by now. I know a lot of you still like him, but he's not a good person. And you wouldn't want to be his friend, because I can't tell you when he'll backstab you. I can't tell you how he'll backstab you, but I can tell you that he will backstab you. Being a friend with Alex is a road to being stabbed in the back. PewDiePie, like if he was just an ordinary dude and he didn't have his 85 million subscribers, he would just be a cool dude dude to hang out with. right? He would just be a bro. I can tell you that because I ran the fraternity. He's just a bro. And that's why his personality attracts so many different people. Uh, on Sleeve Media, I met him in person. We had late night dinner or late night food at Denny's. Who's just, or, he's an ordinary dude. He just likes magic and he plays magic and we talk about magic. And I mean, he's an ordinary dude. He goes to pre-release. He goes to midnight pre-release. I remember he was vlogging about that. And I was like, oh, that's really hard to do because I tried to vlog at my pre-releases. And there's always, like, people who don't want to be in a vlog and da 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 right? So it's hard to vlog. The guy shows up at midnight pre-release. Does Tolarian Community College do that? Does Wedge do that? No. Wedge doesn't even have a game store. He, Wedge has been on many, many tweets saying that he doesn't sh- support local game stores. He only buys from Walmart or Target. And he has said that many times. Uh, Tolarian's the same. Cardkingdom.com, Cardkingdom.com, TCGplayer.com, channelfireball.com. You know, by you can't. It doesn't make any sense that you would say support local game stores. Oh, by the way, our sponsorship is Cardkingdom.com. Please buy from them with my affiliate link. Doesn't make any sense. But anyway, PewDiePie. Um, I think. If he really wanted to get into magic, he could change the culture in a snap. He's already he has already done so. I've already seen some positive changes. I think one of the positive changes is probably the younger demographic. Um, I don't see any young kids at magic anymore. Now you might say that was because of the you know predators who are judges and store owners who don't have background checks, but and employees. And I would agree with you. There have been some very shady employees at uh, places I've gone and I know that background checks are not being run on them because <laughs> I know they have they're felons because uh, they're very proud of it um, I remember this one guy I was trying to go to get my promo file up and I bought six boxes and typically if the owner is there he'll give, just give me six promos again I know that's not what's supposed to happen but I bought a case and typically I get six promos so I asked for my six promos and he was like no no this is going to be the best legacy card ever I was like, Ugh. okay, can I get one? And he's like, no, no, I'm just holding it for the store as an investment. And then I was like, okay, fine. And then this same dude, on this, 
attractive female would always come when the dude was there and then sell him fake magic cards, which then he would buy for a lot of money. And then he would brag about how he was a felon and how he was really good at stealing stuff. And I was like, ooh, all right. <laughs> good employee. Good employee. Um, so we have accepted a lot of really bad individuals in our community. Felix, PewDiePie, is not a bad individual. On leave media. I've met him. I've talked to him. And unless you have done both, you cannot comment on like his in, you know, does he deserve to be punched? Does he deserve to be banned for life with no like warnings or no suspensions? Although Alex has received, you know, Alex has Bacini, the number one magic cheater, has received multiple bans and multiple warnings. And then finally, enough was enough. Uh, and then they uh, banned him for life. But I'm sure he'll be back in some capacity because his girlfriend, Rachel, is being heavily promoted by Vintage Magic, or not Vintage Magic, uh, the MTG Vintage scene, whatever it's called, on the official Wizard of the Coast channel. And things are going really well for them as they make more and more money off the backs of the Magic players. The same can be said about the Mana Source. Um, I've, I'm going to make another video about how the Mana Source is a net negative, and then we we'll use GP Las Vegas as an example. So if you're a business and you fly someone out and you give them a stipend, you give them a hotel, maybe you fly his potential wife out from London to meet him, and then the dude gets injured before he can go to the trade show. Let's assume it's a trade show. Well, you're not going to pay the dude, right? Like, what? you just flew him out there. You ran commercials to your base saying that, hey, come to GP Vegas. The Mana Source will be here. And then it turns out the Mana Source is not there because he injured himself. That is a financial disaster. It's like... It's like, um, hey, we have Megan Fox, and let's pay Megan Fox, let's fly her in, and then Megan Fox, oh, I'll, I'll take a, another example, Lindsay Lohan. So let's say that we fly Lindsay Lohan in, and then she does not show up because she's too drunk. You know, she's self-inflicted or something. Uh, would we be happy that this happened? Would we donate money to Lindsay for rehab, like Channel Fireball did, of $5,000? Probably not. Um, so anyway, if you guys want to support me, I'm not going to ask for a dollar because I've never done that. I'm going to ask you to subscribe to my other YouTube channel. I have been left off the list of 100 most popular social media people in Houston, which I think is unfair because I do have the number one LinkedIn profile by far, by a factor of 10 plus actually. And I want to grab the number one YouTube because it is a race to the YouTube. And I want to grab it, and then once I have kind of the high brow, which is LinkedIn, and then low brow, which is YouTube, you guys, then I'll be able to smack around the social media people in Houston, and they will have to put me on that list. That is what I assume will happen, but who knows? Maybe something even more funny will happen. But I'll report on it, of course. Bye, guys.